Mr. Tom Green. Hi, welcome everyone here to beautiful, it looks like we're in a movie set, doesn't it? This, uh, as you know, that neon sign up there is the most famous neon sign in the world, and now it's protected forever. This is great. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, my name is Tom Green. I was a um, uh, writer and producer on Night Rider and lots and lots of other TV series and TV shows, especially Universal during the time. Uh, I actually worked on the show for almost the entire time it was there. I was producing another show called Magnum P.I. Uh, simultaneously when the first season of Knight Rider came out and they asked me to start doing some creative consulting. And they had a brilliant, uh, wonderful producer named Robert Senator who unfortunately passed away. And so I sort of took the reins and ended up doing the show and having a great time. Uh, it was uh, one of all the shows I've done and all the series and movies I've done, it was probably the greatest crew, the greatest cast you can ever, ever be with. And, uh, and so many of them are here today. Um, one of the things that I have to say while I'm here is I haven't seen some of these people since <coughs> 1982. When I, I started the show when I was four years old, by the way, so stop, stop calculating people, all right? I, it was very young at the time. My mother would take me to set every day and uh, breastfeed me, actually, which was really wonderful. Speaking of that, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, tell you there's two beautiful people here that I worked with, both of which scared the heck out of me because like David Hasselhoff, they haven't aged at all. Catherine over here and Anne over here. And uh, I, I, they don't really know. Anne, I, I want you to know when she was doing the show, as you know, she played one of the great villains of all time. And uh, we were blown away by her. I don't know if she knows this, but there was actually talk of doing a spin-off with her. Uh, but I think she was doing features and you were living in England doing so many other things. She didn't want to do a spin-off with Knight Rider. We were going to have like a talking horse or something for you. But the one thing she never did for us, Anne is also an amazing, amazing entrepreneur. And I don't know if she, she remembers this, at the time, she had invented a bathing suit uh, that was amazing because you could wear the bathing suit and still get a tan under your private parts. Am I, am I not, I'm not making this up, am I? This is true. And it was amazing. Unfortunately, we all wanted her to prove it. And uh, she never did. I was hoping today that she, I think she was going to go and prove that actually, it actually worked. But fortunately, she can see it's much too chill, silly, so it's, it's just not going to happen. But it's wonderful, wonderful to see you here. Uh, and, uh, and this wonderful, beautiful lady uh, to my left here, who uh, at the time started singing, I don't know if you saw her this morning, who came in and did one of the most amazing episodes, if you remember. It's wonderful to see her here because she, uh, she was the only person on the show who actually died. And uh, she's come back to life, which I think is wonderful. And uh, anyway, um, I'm going to pass this on to some of the other people here to talk. It's wonderful having here. If I think we're going to have a question and answer, uh, or if you have any other questions for any of us on the Swiss episode. One last thing I want to tell you is uh, what I'm wearing here is actually the original cast and crew jacket. I seem to be the only person who still has it. And uh, I'll model it for you. And the only thing I'm going to say is when David was here yesterday, he pointed something out to me. First of all, it somewhat fits me still, except when you leave, I'll have to put my stomach out. But uh, David did tell me that he looked so good yesterday, uh, and but he did tell me that he has his Knight Rider passing through jacket, and the only good news was it doesn't fit him anymore. So, yeah! yeah. Right. One time for Mr. Tom Green. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. Let's turn that uh, the microphone over to Mr. Jack Gill. Jack? Legendary stunt man from Knight Rider. Hi guys, so when I started the show, uh, Dave and I grew up in the same neighborhood. He went to a kind of an opposing high school. When we came out to California, I had been doing Dukes of Hazard at the time. And I went straight over from doing Dukes of Hazard on a Knight Rider. And being that I knew David already, it was a pretty clean fit. But with Knight Rider, we did stunts on the show that we have never done to this date. And I still get calls from people saying, hey, we want to jump a car across Main Street. Is that possible? And I said, you guys, we did it almost every week on Night Rider. So, so it's something that we, we always were raising the bar every week. The car, the car didn't last too well for each one of those jumps. We had a deal with Pontiac, and they gave us the cars for a dollar a piece. And sometimes on the set, I had anywhere from 10 to 15 cars that all did different things. Some drove from the right-hand side, so I could hide inside the seat while David jumped in the car. I could drive up, slam on the brakes, he jumps in and we take off and it looks like Kit was driving. So I was always hidden inside of that passenger seat. But like I said, we went through cars like crazy and 
kit didn't survive many of the jumps, although, you know, we always could survive the engine or maybe the back end of it. So it was always a piece together car for the next jump. But it did prove a lot to all to the industry that we could do these enormous stunts and survive it physically, although I, I have a titanium plate in my neck right now and all the jumps. But it, but like I said, it was, it was a groundbreaking thing for the stunt industry and also for action in general. And we had a lot of fun on the show. It was a family-oriented show where everybody could bring all their kids and their family. And David is the one that made it that. He made it something that we all could come and just and have a good time. Even though the hours were very long, I mean, back then we were doing you know, 14 hours a day normally. And even on the weekends, we were still getting together. So it's not like we hated each other. Everybody enjoyed the crew, enjoyed what we were doing. And we were trying to make a difference. So I'm glad that you all came out. I'm glad that we're all still surviving here. And uh, I'll pass this thing on. One time over to Miss Jack Keel is here for him. Michael Shafe, let's talk about how Kit was created. Hey, guys and gals. It's great to see everyone out here. This is kind of like a dream for me. 28 years ago now, I got a call from Glenn Larson. And he said, uh, we're going to make this car. It's a talking car. It can think for itself. It can drive itself. What an opportunity, like probably most of the guys here, I grew up drawing cars, crazy about cars, what a wonderful thing. Went to school actually as a car designer. I worked on 10 or 15 movies before I got the call. I couldn't believe it. It was like a dream come true. You hope, when you're doing a show like this, you hope people will notice it, it will be successful. I had no idea 28 years later there would be a crowd of people. There would be 10 cars out here on Fremont Street in Las Vegas. It's just fantastic to see. It's just an honor to be connected to the show. A lot of shows you work really, really hard. You have no control over who's writing the story, what time the show will be on, what actors are going to be in there. This was something where it really came together. People really loved it. I'm glad the car was part of it. But the success is all due to Glenn Larson and his ideas and the fact that there was such a great team to make such a great show. It was really a privilege to be involved. Maybe if you have some questions, we'll have time to get to them later on. Thanks for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Michael Chaffe. Let's, let's, let's hear from one of our beautiful villainists, Miss Ann Turkle. Well, first I want to Thank you. Miss Ann Turkle. 